In this video, we're going to look at this concept of an abstract data type. So the abstract data type is just a type that's defined in terms of its data items and its associated operations, but it says nothing about the actual implementation details. In a later video, we're going to talk more about this idea of data structures, which we've looked at a little bit. Um, maybe we haven't used it much by name, but whenever we looked at an array or we looked at a vector, uh, those were specific data structures. And they get into the idea of specific implementation details, uh, whereas the abstract data type does not. And if this concept of defining something in terms of its data and its operations sounds a bit familiar, it should, because there's several programming languages that support this construct of an abstract data type, and they support it through uh, this class mechanism. So C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, they all support this idea of a class, and a class is just defining something in terms of data and operations, and it allows for information hiding. And information hiding is very important. So let's look at an example where we talk a little bit more about this idea of doing information hiding. Uh, so the example I'm going to look at is this idea of driving an automobile. Uh, so if we think about driving an automobile, there's a certain interface exposed to the driver. And typically you think about maybe a steering wheel, uh, possibly a clutch, certainly a brake, and certainly a gas pedal. So we've, we know that if we you know, turn the wheel to the right, uh, it's going to, or turn the steering wheel to the right, it's going to turn the car to the right. If we turn the steering wheel to the left, it's going to turn the car to the left. So we're able to perform a certain operation based off of this interface and the car response. And the same thing goes with the, the clutch, the gas, and the brake. So we're really abstracting or, or hiding the implementation details. So you could go in and actually change out maybe the engine, go from a four-cylinder to a six-cylinder, or from a gasoline combustion engine to a, uh, a hybrid or an electric motor. So there's a lot of different choices we could have in terms of the actual implementation that would break the interface of having a steering wheel, having a gas pedal, and having a great, uh, brake pedal. And it's the same idea when we deal with software. So we can have a particular interface exposed to us that provides us with the ability to do certain operations, whereas the implementation details could in fact change. So there may be a better algorithm for doing a search or doing a sort that could be implemented later on, but it's not going to break our software in terms of how we use it. So this abstract data type is really you know, providing us with a nice defined interface and hiding or suppressing the implementation details. And that provides us with this idea of flexibility, so we're able to change out the implementation. Uh, it provides us with a simple interface, so we don't have to know the implementation details. And it also provides us with really a layer of security in the sense that the user doesn't know the underlying representation and therefore they cannot go in and, and change it in an unexpected way that could be harmful and that uh, things would no longer work as expected. All right, so let's take a look at another example. Let's say that we wanted to be able to model a reservation system. So maybe we're, we have a reservation system for a concert hall. So the thing that we need to think about in terms of modeling a reservation system for an abstract data type is we got to think about the data and we have to think about the operations. So the data part would just be maybe the seats and also representing whether the seats were reserved or available. So we'd have to have some way to do that. And the other piece is the operations. So the operations associated with this reservation system may be to determine the availability of the seats, to be able to reserve a seat, to be able to cancel a reservation for a specific seat or maybe a set of seats. Uh, to maybe find a block of available seats. So if you wanted to uh, reserve maybe four or five adjacent seats for your whole entire family or for your friends or for your business or whatever it may be, you could do that. So these would be the associated operations. But again, we haven't said anything about the implementation details. So the implementation details, that starts getting into this idea of data structures, what structures we actually use and what are the maybe the trade-offs or the benefits for using uh, certain structures. And again, I'm going to get into that in a later video. So just as a sort of a recap for this video, we've talked about abstract data types, and we said that this is just types defined in terms of its data and its operations.
but says nothing about the actual implementation details. Uh, so that's it for this video.